Well, I am excited to sit down uh, with Bjorn and Liz Peterson uh, to hear a little bit of your story and journey about how you came to River Valley Church, uh, but also specifically in the area of growing in generosity and what God's been doing in your heart. What were some things about River Valley that really um, kind of drew you to it, knowing like this is our home. One of the things that I loved about the church from the very beginning was um, seeing the heart for missions. It is one of, if not the top priorities for the church to go out into the world and change the world because of Jesus. And it's every single week, you know, it's, yep. it's not just Mission Sunday once a year, once a quarter, whenever the missionary family happens to be home. Right. My grandpa was a medical missionary to Africa, yep. so my mom grew up in Ethiopia. So your mom's dad was a medical missionary Correct. in yeah. Ethiopia? in Ethiopia. I had been exposed to missions from an integral way, you know, yep. growing up, but it wasn't, you know, the weekly focus. You know, for some, it's, it's, the, it's checking the box. You go to church every week. Yep. Um, at River Valley, you know, you're there for a purpose. You're there to experience God. You're there to serve. You're there to be a blessing. Yep. Um, and kingdom builders, you can't, you can't ignore it. You know, you can't, you can't not see it when you're there. What were the conversations like between you two of like, hey, we've always been tithers, but River Valley, there's something different here. What did that look like as husband and wife as you guys are kind of praying through and talking yeah. about that? Well, I think the initial give over and above was for this event last year. I was praying about what we should give and I had a number and I asked Bjorn and he had the same number. I don't know if you even remember yeah, that. Yeah, but, I remember, yeah. And no, that was later. a really cool thing. Um, you know, I'll yep. be honest, we do have a lot of student loans and part of our story over the last year is let's pay this thing off so we can give and give and give and not be restrained. There's a lot of people with debt and they probably think, you know, debt's bad and kingdom builders are good, let's get rid of the debt and then let's participate in King Village. So any, anything like in response yeah. to that. We could be paying off debt forever. You know, yep. we could, we could it could be 10 years. You know, we yep. have, you know, mortgage and inevitably kids need to go to school and college and yep. new car. There's always stuff that's gonna come up. But what, what are your priorities? What do you value? What's in your heart? Like if spreading the word, if enabling some of these people who are, you know, sacrificing way more than we are, Yep. to spend their lives overseas, mm -hmm. you have to do it. You know, it, yep. it's not an option. You, you, you do what you can to pay down your earthly debt, but we're investing in something that's eternal. And that's, yep. you, you see these stories every Sunday and you can't ignore them. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. this, this is what, what God is doing around the world and we can be a part of that. What's your response to like over the last year, seeing what Kingdom Builders is doing around the world? The two stories that come to mind are the Northeast Asian Coffee Company. Yes, um, young and, missionaries. Yeah, young missionaries. Mm -hmm. yep. They look like they could be our neighbors, you know? And, and what are they doing? They're doing something very practical. They're working with coffee, of all things. Yes. Like something that's almost an essential <laughs> supply, you know, around the world. It's let essential. Alone here, it is, you know? make it clear. <laughs> but coffee is essential. But who, who would have thought you could, you could be a coffee farmer and that's missions work? And the story, you know, that the guy who received the Bible in his language for the first time and just, you know, tears, just couldn't believe mm -hmm. that he was holding a Bible in his language. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, money that we give to Kingdom Builders is directly going towards spreading the gospel. The end game is like seeing more people in the Kingdom of God. And Kingdom Builders, through all of those organizations, has done that in the last year. Mm -hmm. and. If I hadn't given anything to Kingdom Builders, like then I wasn't a part of that. Yeah. yeah. And you guys and anybody that's given to Kingdom Builders has been a part of saving real people, mm -hmm. getting them into the kingdom of God that we'll meet on the other side of eternity, yeah. which yeah. is exciting. Yeah. God is always working. It's not, he's not waiting for us. He's always working and it's up to us to join him in yeah. what he's doing. So whether we participate or not, he's gonna move. It's just whether or not you wanna be a part of that. It's been awesome to hear your story, to sit down with you for a little bit. And I'm excited for you guys and your family, the continued legacy of your grandfather who is a medical missionary. But also I'm excited for Miracle Offering this week across all of our campuses, everybody watching online. Uh, believing God's gonna do exactly that, that it will be a miracle offering. Super, super exciting that I get to uh, preach to people like that. And Bjorn and Liz represent so well all of you that are like 
generous, you're living on purpose, your life has been changed by Jesus Christ, you're being obedient. And uh, I love that we're here on Miracle Offering Weekend because you are living saying we are holding nothing back. That's the way you've been living, and uh, I just celebrate that. And as your pastor, I just want to say thank you that this church is so generous and that you've been changing the world uh, just by through your generosity and through your giving. Now, it's Miracle Offering Weekend, and for those of you that are new uh, to the church, this weekend is a weekend where we want to give our very best offering. And uh, as we do this, it's for Kingdom Builders. Kingdom Builders is the ministry that we use to give over and above the needs of our church to expand the church around the world. We do it globally, we do it in local ministries, and we invest in future Christian leaders. And so uh, today's the day that we give our best offering, and it's amazing, we we give this money away. So it's a big day of raising money, and then we give this money away to change lives all around the world. And whether you've been a part of this church for just today or for years and years, I'm praying that everyone will be a part of this, and they'll say, I'm in, you can count on me. Um, I'm gonna help us have a miracle with our miracle offering so we can go after our Kingdom Builders goal. Now, I wanna let you know, our goal this year, when I prayed at the beginning of the year, I said, how much, Lord, should we go after? And I felt like the Lord said, go for $8 million, which would be the highest amount we've ever done. This was pre-COVID, okay? And people were like, did you hear from God? I was like, I, I, I think I heard from God. And I wanna let you know, like, where are we right now, this year, compared to last year and previous years? Okay, last year at this time, we were at $3 million. This year at this time in a COVID world, we are at $3 million, okay? I'm just telling you. So I'm saying, okay, God, let's do this. Now, I admit, I understand there's a a COVID reality of what's going on, and and, and there's 50% of our church is watching online. We've never had a miracle offering where over 50% of our church is on a device or in their living room or or on a ski slope or on a beach. We don't like you guys. Anyway, no, we love you, we love you, love you, all right. But I'm believing God that he can do more than we could ask, imagine, or think. All right, now, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to me to 2 Corinthians chapter eight. As always, we'll have the scripture on the screen. Um, But I wanna point out something here. The Apostle Paul is talking to the church at Corinth about the Macedonians, and I wanna, I'll get you up to speed with this. It says, now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also a completion, this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving." So the Apostle Paul is talking to the church at Corinth, and he's like, guys, I want you to excel in this gift of giving. But he says, I'm talking to you about the Macedonian church. The Macedonian church, look what they have done. Look how, like in their severe trial and all that they're going through, look how they were able to give. And that's what I kind of feel even right now with our COVID reality right now. Our COVID reality, and and we're looking at this saying, okay, um, and by the way, I thank God for the advances with COVID. I thank God for uh, that that fewer people are needing to be, you know, in hospitals for a long time. Fewer people are dying. I thank God for the advances that we're making. I pray for those scientists and doctors and the frontline workers. Keep us safe and healthy. There's a reality, though, right now. There's a reality that is a COVID reality that is affecting us, all of us, in some way. The, the CBPP, you've probably never heard of them, the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, say that right now nearly 24 million adults, that'd be 10% of the adults in America right now, didn't have enough to eat in their household in the last seven days. That's a very real reality that we're living in right now in America. One in six renters are now late on their payment. One in six, okay? One in three are saying that they believe it might be difficult 
somewhat or very difficult in the next coming months to pay their bills of just necessities. There's a, a COVID reality that is happening right now. And I, and, I, and I put that up against what the Macedonians were going through. The Bible says that they were going through a, a severe trial, a severe trial. And some of us in our first world problems are trying to figure out where do we rank compared to the Macedonians? The Macedonians were going through a, a famine in their day. It was a persecution and famine that was going on. And I wanna let you know that famines are even way worse than COVID. All right, I'm not minimizing COVID, but I wanna let you know what the Macedonians were going through was way worse. And the, the closest thing I can illustrate this to you with is um, I found out that Sweden has kept track of all the deaths that have happened throughout the plagues and the crisis over time. And I want them to throw that graph up on the screen if they can. All right, if you look way over on the side here, this little tiny red one way over on the far right as you're looking at it, that's currently the COVID deaths in Sweden. All right, if you see that very big line over there, that was 1772, 1773, dysentery and famine. Look how big famine is compared to COVID. And this is adjusted for population. So I want you to understand, the Macedonian church was going through a famine. They were going through a persecution. We're going through COVID. It's our current reality that has knocked some of us down. But Paul says, these guys were going through it. They were going through it and something happened. And so I wanna look and I'm like, Lord, what happened to them? Can it happen to us? And I say it can. In verse one it says, and now brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. If you're wondering why I have faith high with our miracle offering today, it's because God gave the Macedonian church the grace to give and I've been praying for him to give you the grace to give. You say, how can we do it? God's gonna give us the grace to go through this. And if you've not asked him for the grace to give, you need to start asking, God, give me the grace to give. Give me the strength to give. Give me the grace to give. Empower me to be able to meet the need around the world on this miracle offering weekend. Verse two, it says, in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. In the midst of trials, in the midst of struggles, something supernatural can happen underneath the surface that makes generosity well up and bubble up. It just is something that God does. And, and, and I've just been praying, God, let, let's see this bubble up in our church. Let's see this bubble up right now. And if you're not listening to what God's saying right now, how many know there's nothing bubbling up? There's nothing about it. If you're, just, if you're just watching, if you are addicted to the news right now and you are just zooming it channel, you know, CNN, NBC, Fox, you're going back, Fox, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, and you're, just, and you're watching that, how many know faith is not rising up, fear is rising up? Here's what happens. In moments like this, we are bent for bad news, and bad news is the fertilizer that makes fear grow. Bad news is that fertilizer and it's making fear grow. And then when fear grows, you know what happens? It paralyzes you. And you're like, I don't know. I don't know what we could do. I don't know. I, I wonder if we could do anything for this miracle. I wonder if we could help. What, what should we do? And fear has paralyzed you. And you've got to listen to God in times like this. You've got to say, God, I want to listen to you so that generosity just grows up in me. It just keeps going. And, and here's the thing. Fear is attacking people that are doing well. Uh, there are people right now that are not in the one in six that have fallen behind on rent. They're not in the people that are wondering what's gonna be for dinner this week. Matter of fact, the biggest decision they'll make is after church, where are we going to eat? Because they've got money to eat, and they, but there's still a fear that happens there. These are people that have kept their job. They can pay their bills. They have so much, but not as much as maybe they thought they'd have. Maybe they've been day trading and making more in day trading than they made in their salary, but there's still something about fear right now that's causing people to, to shorten their arms and to pull them back and to say, I don't know, I don't know. And then the enemy says to you, you know what you need to do, you need to do, you need to like stock your shelves just in case. And that's a, a phrase that I'm starting to not like very much. Stock up just in case, just in case, just in case, just in case. Well, we got 10, well, uh, let's go for 20 more, just in case, just in case. And all of a sudden you start saying, you know, fear will cause you to fill your shelves to overflowing just in case while other people's shelves are empty. 
India is saying, hey, kingdom builders, are you gonna send the $98,000 left this year? And I'm saying, hey, hey, we're not gonna stock our shelves. We're gonna fill your empty shelves. Convoy of Hope is like 35,000. Are you gonna do it? I mean, seriously, India, the India's wondering, the persecuted church in the Arab world is like, you gonna stock your shelves? Or are you gonna, are you gonna fill our empty shelf? And I'm saying we are gonna have faith rise up and we're gonna stock their shelves and not ours. We're gonna fill their shelves and say, God, help us. And it's very real. How do I know this? Because it happened to Beck and I this week. Beck and I, at the beginning of the year, when I preach, hold nothing back, ain't no stopping us. You know, I mean, it was, faith was high, right? Pre-COVID, faith was high. And I said to Becca, I said, I believe God wants us to give our dream goal this year. Our dream goal. Like we're gonna have to believe for thousands, tens of thousands more than we have. And what we could, it's our dream goal. We could do it. This is the year God spoke to me. And, and how many know in January, it seemed really like, praise God. And about May 1st, I was like, oh God, you know, like, <laughs> right? Well, not the way we planned it, but God provided in a different way. And I'm sitting here with the ability to do the dream goal, and Beck and I are sitting there, and, and just in case started speaking in our home. And I'm like, well, just in case. We probably, but just in case. And we're staring at this ability to give, but just in case was screaming at Becca and I. And we went to bed that night, and just in case was winning, and we woke up in the morning, and Faith was winning. I looked at Becca and I said, I couldn't sleep last night. She's like, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I, I, I said, we've, 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 we've got to give it. We've got to not do the just in case. I said, I can't imagine God blessing our life if we said we we're going to do the dream goal and then he put an unexpected blessing in our hand and then instead of giving it, we, we, we put it in the just in case and we like high-fived each other, hugged. And we're like, we're going to do it. And I could tell you that Becca transferred the gift and we were like dancing in our kitchen because just in case didn't win, faith won. One, and we gave our dream goal. We, we just gotta say, God, I'm blessed to be a blessing and I will sometimes have to sacrifice, sometimes just in case we'll lose and faith will win. Sometimes these needs will go and, and I won't have one of these and one of these and one of these, but instead I'll do this for your glory. There's a guy, Sadio Mane. He's a, a, a football player, a soccer player for us Americans. He's from Senegal and he, he uh, plays for Liverpool. He makes $14 million a year. I think we have his picture, we get there on the screen. Makes $14 million a year. And he's decided I won't live in extreme luxury. He says this quote, he said, why would I want 10 Ferraris, 20 diamond watches or two planes? What will these objects do for me in the world? I was hungry and I had to work in the field. I survived hard times, played football barefooted. I did not have an education and many other things, but today with what I earned thanks to football, I can help my people. I built schools, a stadium. We could provide clothes, shoes, food for people who are in extreme poverty. In addition, I give 70 euros per month to all people in a very poor region of Senegal, which contributes to their family economy. I do not need to display luxury cars, luxury homes, trips, and even planes. I prefer that my people receive a little of what life has given me. This man is likely not suffering, but you know what? He's going without. He's giving sacrificially. He's going without things he could buy to take care of people whose shelves are empty. He doesn't claim to follow Christ. Matter of fact, he belongs to another religion. But I'm just saying, shouldn't the people of God live this way? Saying, God, in a time where shelves are empty, we could do something and we won't just hold back we won't hold back, we will, we will move forward. I prefer to, I'd love to modify what he, what he said, because remember he said, I want these people to taste a little bit of what I've, life has given me. Here's my modification. When I give to kingdom builders, I prefer that people that don't know Jesus receive what God has graciously given me. That's what I wanna do. I wanna say when I give to kingdom builders, I, I prefer that they would taste the goodness of God, and that's why I'm a kingdom builder, and that's why fear doesn't win in my house and in my life, and I pray it doesn't win in your life. Now, I know people say like, I don't know, but what, just in case, you don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds it, okay, so I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. He hasn't let me down. All right, verse three through five, I gotta get going, I gotta get through this. For I testified that they gave as much as they were able, even beyond their ability. Can I just say that? That's where probably we get the 110%. I, when I was growing up, people say we gave 110%. I was like, you can't. 100% is all. You can't give 110%. 
Yeah, you can. You, you stretch beyond what you thought you could give and you created a new normal, which is now your 100%, but you went beyond it and they, and they gave beyond their ability. And, and in verse five, this is just so funny. The apostle Paul, like he's asking them to give and then he says this, they exceeded our expectations. They exceeded our expectations. Can you imagine that? That's like a coach coming and going like, you guys really won. You did it. You know, for those of you who don't know, my father-in-law, like he said that to me many times, like, wow, I can't believe that you amounted to this. I'm like, how low were your expectations? <laughs> now I know why he fought me so hard for Mary and Becky. He's like, oh boy, all right, you know. Man, I gotta tell you, I have not had low expectations of our church. That's why I prayed and believed in faith for $8 million. That's why I'm still holding on to faith right now. That's where, uh, you know that our, our church has been in growth year after year after year after year. The only things that have slowed us down is lack of leaders and a COVID year. That's it. That's the only thing that has slowed us down. And I'm charged, I'm saying, God, like, like let's move forward. I had some of my pastors, friends, I, we had about 80 people on a Zoom teaching thing about kingdom builders, and they were asking like, what, what, how, how much less are you gonna believe for? And I said, none. Why, why not? Why aren't you pulling back? I'm like, because I'm not gonna pull back. I don't know what God's gonna do. I said, I don't know if God's blessed somebody else over here that can do it this year. I don't know if the CARES Act, which the CARES Act, people can give 100% of their income and write it off, never done before. 50% was the limit and now it's 100%, one year only because of COVID. Companies that can only write off 10%, but this year they can write off 25%. It's a one-time exemption and I thought, Lord, Please, how about a couple of those? Our online off offering, I'm like, that. who knows? Maybe there's somebody watching right now online and they're like, I'm in. And, and we'll, so I'm not lowering our faith. The need is so big. The lost are still lost. The thirsty are still thirsty. The hungry are still hungry. The naked still need to be clothed. And the prodigal still needs to come home. So I'm not stopping. So in times like this, I'm believing for the same grace that the Macedonians had. And you saw on that chart, like famine, way more. And I understand the COVID reality is very real, but I'm believing that this is a church that exceeds expectations. That's what I'm believing. I'm believing that, that the India house churches can say, hey, this is a church that exceeds expectations. We're gonna do it. I'm believing that Japan right now that's saying, are you gonna start more churches with us? We would say, yep, we're a church that exceeds expectations. I'm saying live dead Arab world. Again, we will exceed expectations. And while I'm at it, Russia, we haven't forgotten about the orphans. We are gonna be a church that exceeds expectations. Eswatini, give the kids a hug. Hope is on the way. That's, what I, that's the type of church we're going to be. They say, Pastor Rob, how can you be so confident? How can you be so confident in this? Two things, two things. One comes from Proverbs and one will be back in our text here. Proverbs 11.25 says this, a generous person will be prosperous and one who gives others plenty of water will himself be given plenty. Here's what I believe. I believe that when we water the dry souls of the world through kingdom builders giving, and we say, here comes a well that will help you. Here comes a church that will preach the message of Jesus. Here comes clothing and food for orphans. Here comes, do you see what I'm saying? Here, do you know that we underwrite the, the livelihood of, of, of hundreds of people that live in the Arab world that are being persecuted and cannot have a job because they follow Jesus and they've been told you cannot work anymore. We underwrite them. We are watering people that are thirsty and dry and dying. And we're saying we're bringing the water and the word of God says those that water the dry will be watered themselves. And how many know God has his hose hooked up to a bigger hydrant than we do? And so I'm just believing that I can be so faith-filled because we're watering the dry and he's got a bigger, his bigger hose coming our way, all right? And then, and, and then this, is the, this is the real clincher. This is the real clincher. In verse five, in verse five, they said, it says this, they gave themselves, the Macedonians, it says, they gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. The Macedonians said, Lord, here's my life. I hold nothing back. You have me. You have me. And then when the need came up, he said, this is the need. They said, yeah, you can, you can have the money. You already have me. 
And when I think about River Valley Church and the church we have here, I understand that this church has already said, you, you have me. You have me. This isn't a social club. Lord, you have me. I, I'm on mission. I gave you my life. We have people giving their life to Jesus every week. You have me. And so when the need's there, we're like, Lord, sure you can have this because you've already had me all along. And so now when the need is there, I'm willing to say, Lord, I hold nothing back. You already have me. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give to you. I'm gonna go and say whatever they need, I'm gonna be obedient. Fear will not win. Faith wins in this house. Faith wins in this house. Come on, give God a praise all across the church. I want them to know the God that we know. I don't want to pull back. I want to keep pressing forward. And I believe this, the multiplied good that you've done will grow and grow and grow and grow. And I want you to see this video, and it was referenced, the Seed Company video about bringing the Bible to people that didn't have the Bible in their language. I want you to see the smiles there and realize there's more smiles coming. Africa's hope, there's more smiles coming because we want to fund that project. Cuba churches that are facing persecution, we want to fund that project. Healing Haiti, we want to fund the project. We want to do that. Uh, Hand of Hope, we want to build the churches, dig the wells. I mean, the people of Burkina Faso, we want to bring hope. And because you have first given your life to the Lord, River Valley Church, because you've done that, man, I believe we will now be able to financially bring our gifts to, to, to the church through Kingdom Builders and now bring this message to a world that needs to know Jesus. Amen. Amen. Over 2,100 people groups still do not have the Bible translated in their language. When we completed the New Testament in 2001, Right from that moment, we began to see great transformation among the Taraka people. Even in my church to date, I preach in my mother tongue. I remember being invited to one of them and I ran in Kidaraka. Before I finished the reading, they were all clapping hands. Just reading. So it means, therefore, this language is so special to them. It touches you. You, you clearly understand what the Bible says. You know, the Raqqa community has been rejected for years and marginalized. I felt now we have something we can say, this is our own. So now the story is complete. The old and the new gives us a complete story of salvation. When the procession came in, I was crying, crying with joy. It was so powerful for me. Even now when I remember, tears of joy come to my eyes because I was so happy that what you have been waiting for has finally come. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.